You can no longer visit Tinkerbell at Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. Sure, you can watch her go down the zip line flying during the fireworks, but actually getting to talk to her, that's a big no-no. It's a story we've been watching unfold over the last two years, yet some say it's utterly clickbait. Today, we're here to put away those concerns and tell you the real concern should be on Disney management. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel, coming to you live from a studio in somewhere sunny USA. We're happy to have you come our way today. Please click the like button as we get ready to dive into today's topic, which is poor little Tinkerbell, the pixie dust fairy who is iconic to Disney and its story, its legacy indeed, and yet a group you may never have heard of, the Story Matters Group at the Walt Disney Company. They have deemed her problematic, and as a result, things are happening. Folks, we'll share it with you. Let's bring the panel on right now. This comes to us from the uh. New York Times, and this is a very old article, but I'm going to explain why we're reading it in just a moment. This is the New York Times, and it says, Disney built on fairy tales and fantasy confronts the real world. The entertainment behemoth spent decades avoiding even the whiff, the whiff, said Stewie, of controversy, but it has increasingly been drawn into the partisan political fray. This one's by Brooks Barnes. There's, there's a lot of fun in. Here. They didn't oh. want to do it. They were drawn in. I see. Or is that <laughs> this a, is a, is that this is a very part? fun, very fun article, Lou. You're going to love parts of this because we can go back and look at it in hindsight and find the humor sincerely. But let me show you this. Uh, and folks, as we do, let me say, the reason we're going here for our very first story is there's been some pushback. Some folks out there have said that the Tinkerbell story really isn't a real thing. You know, it's clickbait in that, uh, you know, Tinkerbell will be back. This is just a normal cast, you know, change on uh, at Disney World and all of that. Let's mm -hmm. find out, though. This, by the way, we need to say, this is all the way back from June 22nd of 2023. That's the update. But originally, folks, if you take a look at this, it was published all the way back April 17th, 2022. Now, what do we know what was happening? Bob Chapek was under fire. Since its founding in 1923, Disney has stood alone in Hollywood in one fundamental way. Its family-friendly movies, television shows, and theme park rides, at least in theory, have always been aimed at everybody, with potential political and cultural pitfalls zealously avoided. The Disney brand is about wishing on stars and finding true love and living happily ever after. In case the fairy tale castles are too subtle, Disney theme parks outright promise an escape from reality with welcome signs that read, Here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. Lately, however, real-world ugliness has been creeping into the Magic Kingdom. In this hyper-partisan moment, both sides of the political divide have been pounding on Disney, endangering one of the world's best-known brands, one that for many symbolizes America itself, as it tries to navigate a rapidly changing entertainment industry. Now, this is largely a feel-good piece for Disney, and that's what the New York Times is up to. We know what the New York Times is. We know what they're always sort of shading towards, right? Let's go down, though, folks. Let's go, let's go, let's go, and let's hope that this held. Oh, no, we're going to have to search. Hang on, folks. It's lost it. Here we go. There we go. I got it. Tinkerbell, this is what we want. Remember that this is back from 2022. And remember that I have been covering the Stories Matter group, which is, by the way, we believe a subset of Reimagine Tomorrow for a very long time. So I want to read this to you. Well, actually, you know, we're going to go up here. This is this is amazing. This this. Here we go. You just got to see this. As Disney prepared to introduce its streaming service into the 2019, it began an extensive review of its film library. As part of the initiative called Stories Matter, Disney added disclaimers to content that the company determined included negative depictions or mistreatment of people or cultures. Examples included episodes of The Muppet Show. Oh, Jim Henson, you are a round and raucous person. From the 1970s and the 1941 version of Dumbo. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now, the disclaimers read. The Story Matters team privately flagged other characters as potentially problematic, with the findings distributed to senior Disney leaders, according to two current Disney executives who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss confidential information. Ursula, the villainous sea witch from The Little Mermaid, was one. Her dark color palette could be viewed, viewed through a racial lens, the Story Matters team cautioned. She is also a queer no with mannerisms inspired, in part, by those of a real-life queen. And here's where we get to it, folks. 
This is why it's not clickbait. This is why the Tinkerbell disappearing from meet and greets matters. Because if you don't call them out now, they'll not stop. And as soon it'll be all changed, you got to call it back to get the backlash going. <laughs> was marked for caution. Remember, folks, 2022, the New York Times. Tinkerbell was marked for caution because she is body conscious. Oh, my. She's body conscious. She cares about what she looks like. She she watches her figure and jealous of Peter Pan's well, attention. Uh, the execs. Lou, take it away. Isn't there some character in all of this that looks in a mirror a lot? A mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Well, Who I, is the I, evil I queen Tall tallest of tall? And then the mirror tells her that Rachel Zegler is way more beautiful than her. That's how it goes nowadays. <laughs> Spencer, watch your pronouns. You're, you're making assumptions here, Spencer. I, Remember. I, I, I truly am. I need to wait for the characters to come out in the trailer. That's right. Uh, Nick, are are we Nick talking line? about the X-Men? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could be. Well, we will be later. Well, no, but, uh, I mean now. <laughs> Ron, talk, Ron, oh, talk oh, about oh, the, uh, the parks, though, for a minute. Tinkerbell. Uh, she's no longer available for a meet and greet. Since 2022, the Stories Matter group has labeled her as problematic. You see the insanity, the reasons why. They're the same group going around labeling all of the legacy Disney content as flawed and problematic. So, Ron, walk us through. Uh, did you ever find that, that families left the Tinkerbell Pixie Dust meetup and that they okay. were appalled? Did little did little heavy set girls <laughs> with extra girth, did they, did they wallow in their tears outside? The uh, Rapunzel restrooms. What was happening, uh, Ron? First of all, that's never happened ever. <laughs> um, the, I, I do know that the Tinkerbell meet and greet has been shuttered since uh, COVID. Actually, since before, since um, since park shut down, they never brought Tinkerbell back uh, for the meet and greet for some reason. At that point, but what I will tell you um, is, I spent a lot of time as a cast member, and I mean, Tinkerbell is probably maybe the most popular uh, right. outfit right. that little girls are wearing. Um, they love to, they sell the she's, Tinkerbell wings. She's the merchandising gold on she's yeah, up there absolutely. with Luana for making money. I mean, what's the part of I was I was uh we took my mother-in-law to um the Grand Floridian celebrate her birthday, watch the fireworks, and of course, even from there, I mean, like that's gotta be what thousands of feet away, maybe and I know it's gotta be maybe like a half mile away. I don't know, but you can see Tinkerbell coming down from the castle, and that is like a highlight. Uh, I mean, people watching from the Grand Floridian all the way was over the Magic Kingdom, <laughs> all the way, all, way, like it's. I mean, that's the, as close as you'll applause. get to her, Ron. She that's as close her. as you'll get to her. <laughs> but she gets applause, so I'm like, I don't, I don't. Here's here's my problem with what Disney is doing with all of this stuff. They are highlighting problems that exist for two people somewhere in the audience, and you don't. That makes no sense from a business standpoint, none whatsoever, because now it's it's going to create controversy that doesn't need to be there. And that's not going to bring money in to the company. That doesn't make sense. Oh, she run, makes run, money run, like run, Moana. Run, run, run. Lou, you tell us where he's done wrong. Soul. You naive soul. <laughs> money? Making money? <laughs> you mean like those capitalist since, people? Since when? Oh my is God! Money? How oh, yeah, money? Right. The parks are co-op now. I forgot. <laughs> that's yeah, right, that's Nick. Right. And, Nick, would you support a, a, a some sort of apparel, a line of merchandise that says "Make Tinkerbell Up Close Again"? Would you support that? Uh, absolutely. I would support it. <laughs> I, I don't want to put you in a very awkward spot, but that's an awkward thing to have to say yes or no to. But uh <laughs> no <laughs> up close and personal with the fairy that captured your hearts. Yeah. Nick, how did this Nick, how did this go for uh Star Wars when they did all this nonsense? So uh, we can predict and project what'll happen with Disney proper. How did this it, go? It it did not go well at all. And the fact that they're doing this once again here, they've already did it with Splash Mountain, you know, which was based off a of song of the south. Now it's based off of the princess and the frog you know, cause they had to make sure they had the diversity in there. It's just, it's this virtue signaling. That's just weird. I, I, I don't know. It's like the culture we live in. It's a, it's a, it's a freaking clown world. Uh, I just, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Agreed well, on I that. Wanna know, when they talked about, they went through all the back catalog, classic stuff. Was Bob watching them four or five, six times too, to come up with these decisions. 
We know it was among among the movies he was watching four, five, six times, like all the others. He wasn't I mean. watching any of the movies. We all know that. Come on now. <laughs> Spencer, uh, talk to us about. Uh, I suppose. What are some things that Disney might should concentrate on more than whether or not a pixie dust that probably prints money, uh, whether or not she's problematic? What are, what are some issues that Disney faces that might be of more concern at the moment? Hmm, what could Disney... Oh, that's right. Literally anything else. Like, anything else in their business is more important for them to look at than getting Tinkerbell out of the parks. Like it's such, it's like, uh, I, I forget who just brought it up because my mind just blanked, but it is a solution for all of the two or five people who are going to be on Twitter, who are going to, you know, blow up about this, whine about this, cry about this. Like they have forever. Like I, this complaint about Tinkerbell isn't new, but now it's being given like attention because that's the world we live in. That's the clown world that Nick was talking about that we live in now. Honestly, like even ignoring all of their movie television disasters, production disasters, investment disasters, like just looking at the parks. And this is coming from somebody who like I am not a park guy like you guys, but I follow the news. Thanks to you guys and Vash and Jonas and everybody like there's so much like there needs to be infrastructure, like uh, updates to everything in there. There needs to be uh, Imagineers brought back in because everything is looking really terrible. I mean, really, guys, who hasn't seen the back of, uh, what is it nowadays? It's not Splash Mountain, but uh, Tiana's back, Bayou Backside of Tafiti. Right. Yeah, it, that is so bad. It is so bad. Like I The logs Spencer, are a little too brown, it, oh, Spencer. Oh, Spencer, it, it, I, I love you, and I hate to contradict you, but here's the real core. You said the world that we're all living in. The answer is most of us aren't living in that world. We're living sure. in the other world that likes Tinkerbell. And they're basically saying to the majority of people who once were their audience, uh, your world doesn't matter. Only ours does. Our weird fantasy land world where where Captain Hook is offending people without a hand somewhere because he's a bad guy. Because how, Lou, how did you know? Any, how did you know that was in the Story Matters group? You must have read this article. I, because I read the, <laughs> on the screen when you put it up. I hadn't seen the oh, article I before see. that. Reading but, ahead. But I mean, for God's sakes. Keep so, up. in other words, if he was a hero with a hook, let's have 12 of them. Uh, you know, and by the way, what are we going to say about the croc that ate the hand? Oh, that, that croc cannot be blamed. It, it is neither I, male I, nor I mean, female. Because, it is well, unidentified. Peter would have a. a, a Hissy fit about it if they if they blame the croc. It was yes, you can't villainize a croc. The one what about the beast that is always broken down at Disneyland is that crocodile. So <laughs> and so, I guess it's some evil uh, capitalist, uh, white supremacist, uh, anti animalist who's been secretly not doing the maintenance on that one float compared to all the others. Right? Yet another reason, Lou, well, that they should right. just get rid of Walt, get rid of him because he villainized crocodiles. Oh. Let's just read a little a little farther ahead in the article, though, because um, this is amazing because we get that hindsight that's so, so delicious here. <laughs> just let me read this to you so you all can savor in how poorly this went. You ready? It says, at least some people inside Disney are concerned that such sensitivities go too far. For those of you just joining us, so many are joining the show. This is back from 2022 when they first oh, I identified. Thought, I, thought you were, I thought you were taking a swing at like uh, the New York Times. Like for those of you joining us, like, yes, of course, it's going way too <laughs> over the edge. That's well, you got to understand that the New York Times in 2022 is trying to pitch this as well as they can for Disney, right? I, I, that's, I think it's Andrew Clavin who every time he mentions their name says, the New York Times, a former newspaper. Uh, <laughs> every single time, yeah. Here's what it says. One of the executives worried that looking at artistic creations through a politically correct filter could chill creativity. Disney, of course, declined to comment for this article. Later on, folks, one of the, the fascinating things about this is that they go on to say that back, uh, backlashes and boycotts essentially have absolutely no impact on Disney. Now, you can see that back then they were focused on the uh, Muppet Babies issue, right? Remember all that. And they were uh, worried about Loki and uh, those kinds of things. But uh, Disney was not worried about this whatsoever. But here's the Florida situation as we read through it. And, um, but ultimately, Disney said, not going to be a problem, not going to be an issue. And this was back when Chapek was battling against, remember, 
Bob Iger. This was all Bob, Bob Iger stuff. Too Shower Bob was putting Disney right in the middle of the politics, and Chapek was trying to navigate it. Did not go well for Chapek. Now it's not going well for Bob. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have come to the end of just this video. More on the way, though, so do not fret, not yet, for content. It is a coming. Three times daily right here on the Pro Channel. Make sure to check out our sister and brother channels as well, That Park Place, as well as That Park Place Podcasts online. You can find that one at That Pod Place right here on YouTube. Folks, like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on poor little Tinkerbell and whether or not we have engaged in clickbaiting, or is it a real story indeed. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and even you, Tink, keep having fun.